Kevin, the floor is yours. Just what happened with the Colts against the Jacksonville Jaguars this past weekend? I mean, what didn't happen, realistically? Um, shit offense, bad defense. Um, special teams can't really say much about it. Obviously, you know, we uh, we punted the ball well. We made a field goal. We got we went for two instead of uh, the extra point on our one touchdown of the game that was irrelevant. So I can't really say all phases were shit. But um, overall, just a bad performance by the team. You can tell that Jacksonville had come out ready for – everything and anything, and that the Colts just came out flat. I knew that this game was going to go south based on the first drive of Trevor Lawrence going 9 of 9, throwing for like 70-something yards, going down the field and scoring a touchdown. Um, Rocky Sin goes down in that first drive. Kenny Moore goes down that first drive. Kenny ends up coming back. But, I mean, you can tell that Kenny has just been out of it the last two games. I mean, you know, one of our our our, uh, our proud pro bowlers uh, was just getting cooked pretty much the last couple of games and just – it was horrible. Carson Wentz looked like garbage. The offensive line is probably the biggest fault here for me as a Colts fan. It was arguably, if not obviously, our best feature all year was the dominance that our offensive line was able to provide. Whether or not we had members missing due to COVID or injury, you saw that the depth that Chris Ballard in the front office was able to provide behind the starting five was viable dominant and and just very 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 uh run heavy and they really really loved when the the run plays were were designated so for us to get abused on the offensive line or just the line of scrimmage in general is kind of embarrassing to pretty much every extent you could think of i mean carson wentz was sacked six times and i know what you're thinking carson wentz is known for getting sacked he's known for trying to extend the play but genuinely i watched this game pretty much almost until the end uh, Carson had no time to throw the ball today. There was a lot of times where the pocket just collapsed, and I'm looking at the left side of the ball just at Eric Fisher. I said it at the beginning of the year. I didn't like the signing. I didn't like the price tag that he was given, and I was right. Whether or not I was right for the right reasons because I thought that the injury itself was going to be the reason why he didn't play a lot of games, but in reality, his performance is the reason why I'm not happy. He gave up two or three sacks early on in the first half uh, to Josh Allen specifically, he was getting beat the majority of the game, and he was not benched until the fourth quarter where it was too late. Um, aside from not being able to protect Carson, they weren't able to provide holes and lanes for Jonathan Taylor. It was always those second and third efforts that Jonathan had to provide, uh, fighting at the line of scrimmage to either spin out or kind of try to break the first or two, first or second tackle to really get it, gain any positive yards. We were stopped on fourth down multiple times because Jacksonville knew, listen, load up this box. We're crushing this offensive line all day. We're going to stop them, and they did. Trevor Lawrence looked like Joe Montana today, absolutely unstoppable. The defense that we brought onto the field is not the defense that we've had all year. Darius Leonard was a non-factor. The pass rush was a non-factor. We pat, we uh, sacked Trevor Lawrence once. We weren't able to get any turnovers. We weren't able to get any big stops, and uh, it shows. So like I said, I, I, I can't be mad anymore because I'm actually just relieved I don't have to watch this team on Sundays anymore. I'm relieved that I don't have to watch this team play in the playoffs and get embarrassed on national television and say, wow, that was a waste of a wild card spot. I'm just over it. The fact that we had three points against the worst team in the NFL back-to-back years up until the fourth quarter was embarrassing. It was atrocious. It was uh, every heinous synonym you can think of is running through my mind. But again, I also don't have the vocabulary that I wish I did. So I'm just going to say we played like shit. I'm not happy about it. I'm pissed. And we don't deserve to be in the playoff. We say, we, we, Colts fans were saying it all week. If we lose to the Jags, if we play like shit to the Jags, we don't deserve to be in the postseason. That's what happened. Well, now that the season is over, now that you can kind of take stock of the entire year, you know, what were some things that you kind of, kind of look back on that was like, you could have done some things a little bit differently and maybe some things that you could look forward to going into the off season and going into next year. My biggest thing that we need this off season, granted, I know it's different for every Colt fan, but for me, um, our defense is clearly our best attribute outside of our offensive line, right? Our defense plays well in our zone. We don't know what's going to happen with Matt Eberflus, if he's going to take another job, if he's going to come back, whatever the case is, but we have playmakers on the defensive side of the ball. We don't have a pass rush. Our pass rush has been bare minimum all year long. It's been bare minimum. It's been at the bottom of the NFL in terms of league average for the last couple of seasons. 
Our best pass rusher was DeForest Buckner, who is a defensive tackle and who demands a double team every time he's on the field, and he had seven. Our first-round pick missed about four games this year, and he had about five sacks. AQ Muhammad, Alquan Muhammad, had six sacks this year. Freaking, uh, oh my God, I, of course, now I'm starting to forget his name. But the point of the matter is, uh, oh, Kam- uh, Kamoko Turi had five and a half sacks. As a unit, that's it, terrible. There was nobody that was progressively dominant. There's no pass rush that was really able to get to the quarterback and make their life hell. So that's a top priority for me. I know for a fact we need to go, got, go, out, go out and get a receiver. I know we need a left tackle because Eric Fisher better not be on that fucking roster next year. So help me, Jesus Christ. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, we, we, we definitely need a wide receiver. T.Y. Hilton, I love you. I respect you for everything you've done for this organization. Between you missing basically half the season and being almost a non-factor the entire year when you were on the field, um, you got to go. Whether you retire or go to another team, that's it. I'm done. I'm over it. Paris Campbell missed 35 games in three years. One of our top picks a couple of years back. You got to get the fuck out of here. I'm tired of you being brittle glass. We already had T.Y. being glass, and now now you're doing the same shit. You got to go. So the wide receiver room is going to be really, really, really thin. Uh, Michael Pittman obviously had a breakout year. So with him being basically the only reliable receiver outside of Zach Paschal, um, I think we're definitely going to need some help in the wide receiver room. So whether that's free agency or in the draft, I think that those are our top four needs. And in no particular order because we need them all. Wide receiver, left tackle, pass rush, and then, of course, um, oh, my God, what the hell did I just say? Um, oh, and I, I didn't say it. I think, uh, I, think, I think we need some cornerback depth. I don't know if Rock is going to get um, an extension. I don't know if Xavier Rhodes is coming back. Probably not. TJ Carey was on a one-year deal. Isaiah Rogers is on a 10-year. I don't exactly know the length of his contract or his situation. So we have no idea what the hell is coming back on, in the cornerback room as well. So we definitely have some, some big needs to fill because this team, if we come back basically reloaded, we're not going to win a damn fucking thing.